Hey makeup friends, it's the end of the month, which means it's time to round up the products that made me go ooh, and the products that made me go ooh. Let's get into it. As always, I want to start this video off by welcoming you back to my channel, or if you are new here, then hello and welcome. My name is Kara, and on my channel, we like to mix beauty, brains, and the occasional F-bomb slash S-H-bomb. I say that because the eyeshadow palette that I am wearing today is one of the new ones from BH Cosmetics called Let That Shit Go. On my lips is one of the tinted lip balms from Zara in the say shade Say Cheers. All right, so I have gathered some products here, some of which made me go, ew, and some of which made me go, ooh. We get it, right? Like, rather than saying favorite or fail, we're going ew or ew. We get it. I'm just trying to be cute and different. I might be failing. You can let me know. That's okay. We're going to start off with the negative oohs, and then we're going to move on to the positive oohs. We'll do a tonal inflection. Okay. First up is this lip gloss here from BH Cosmetics, which is part of their new Say It collection. This is, I'm pretty sure, the shade Feeling Like a Snack looking like a snack, tasting like a snack, I want a snack, something to do, snack-centric, something to do with snacks. I will never be able to read this sticker without the assistance of a microscope, so it's something snacky. Regardless, I don't like it. It's a pretty color, I'll give it that, but it has that like really mentholated feel where it just like makes your lips feel like you're kissing an ice cube. That's just not for me. It reminds me of like the buxom glosses and I do not enjoy that sensation whatsoever. If you're not bothered by that, you might like this gloss. It has fairly good pigmentation and although there is some like little bits of shimmer in there, there's nothing gritty on the lips, but I just, I can't get past the feeling that my lips are like 10 degrees colder than the rest of my body and it lasts for altogether far too long and I just don't like that. It doesn't tingle or sting like some lip plumping glosses do, but it just, it makes me hyper aware of my mouth and I just, I don't like it. So for me, this made me go, ew. <laughs> also, I just realized that the shade name is printed all over the fucking lid on this thing, not just on the bottom sticker. It's looking like a snack. As it says in like 30 point font all the way around this thing. Another product that left me wanting so much more this month is the new Zendo palette from Natasha Denona. Now, I did do a fully dedicated review to this, and I did point out what I think was a fairly balanced review, although clearly came out on the side of, it's just not my cup of tea. Part of my problems, though, were, in particular, this shade right here called Breath. It looks like it's gonna be this really pretty mint kind of green. Finger swatches nicely, but then once you apply it to the eyes, like, it just blends into basically nothing. Like it just looks like a slightly greenish white, but not even as strong as that. Like it just, it blends into like nothing and I can't build it up. Like it just, it's such a pretty color in the pan, but upon application, it just disappears. So it may as well not even be in the palette. And then the shimmers just weren't shimmery enough for my liking. The mattes do blend nicely, so I didn't really have an issue with that for the most part, but this is just a palette where I feel you really need to put in a lot of effort with it. And for the price tag that Natasha Denona charges, I'm not willing to put in that much effort for the palette. I feel at that price range, the palette should be as user-friendly as possible, and each shade should stand up to the same standard as all the other shades in the palette. So. For there to be some duds in here, and I mean, this one is not the only dud by far. There were some others that are really difficult to pick up on a brush. For example, this shade over here and blending it out. Again, that one becomes patchy as well. And I have tried to make this palette work for me. And while I can achieve some nice looks with it, and while I certainly don't think it's the worst thing on the market, there is definite inconsistencies within this palette itself, and some shades are definitely better than others. But overall, it's just one of those palettes that maybe if it had like a $30 price point or 40 even, I probably wouldn't be so bent out of shape about it. 
but it was like 85 Canadian, I believe it was. And then I paid $20 in customs fees and $20 US shipping. And so as a consumer, I have paid over $100 for the privilege of owning this palette only to be disappointed by it. And for that, I say ew. Lastly, on the negative side of things is this finishing powder here from Chantecaille. This is the Flower Power Perfect Blur Finishing Powder. First of all, the packaging is adorable. Like, it's precious. I frankly would have liked if it had been like covered in resin so that these little flowers weren't sticking up because I think at some point they're gonna peel off, but it has a sense of nostalgia and whimsy to me. It reminds me of like, what the hell was that called? Was it called Fimo? Is that what it was called? It was like, it looked like this and like you baked it or some shit. I don't know, I'm old. I don't remember what I did in my childhood, but I'm pretty sure it was called Fimo. Doesn't matter. It reminds me of a craft activity when I was a child. I love all the colors in it. I just think it's fun. I like it. I know some people it makes them a little cringy. I happen to like it. Now on the inside, which arguably is far more important than the outside, you have the setting powder. And I just don't see what's special about it. I have tried with different brushes. I have tried sweeping it across the face. I have tried pressing it into the face. I have tried begging it. I have tried flirting with it. I have tried swearing at it. But no matter what I do, I don't see any bloody difference in my skin. Maybe it's because I have a perfect complexion that doesn't need any blurring. However, I don't think that's what it is because I can see myself in a mirror and I know it's not. So it's probably that this just isn't doing a whole heck of a lot. And for $100, it should. The heavens themselves should open up and the spotlight of God should shine on my face. So I'm very disappointed because it was very expensive. And I was very excited because I've heard so many people rave about Chantecaille powders and I just, I just don't see it. I just don't get it. Anyway, let's move on to the products that made me go, ooh, this month. And I've got quite an assortment here, including one item that has nothing to do with makeup, but it really does make my heart so happy that I had to include it in here as a favorite. But I'm gonna make you wait for it. We'll talk about that one at the end. Let's first talk about what's on my lips, and that is from Zara Beauty. This is the Tinted Lip Balm in Say Cheers. And first of all, I love the packaging of this. Like it's very strongly magnetized. I'm not so wild on the slant, honestly. However, it does fit well in my holder and it doesn't present any problems. And everything in this line is fully refillable. So when you buy a lipstick, you can either buy it with the compact or you can buy it on its own. And I think it runs about $11 to buy just this portion and 19 to buy it together as the set. They do clip into place very easily. And then, like I said, it is a very strong magnetic hold on there. Now this shade is just a really, really pretty pink. And I'm just gonna top it up. Because it's so light, it's so easy to do just on the fly. And you don't have to worry about being super precise with it. I just find that it's very emollient, very comfortable. And like I said, it's one of these products that you can touch up on the fly very easily without needing a mirror or having to worry about it smearing all over the place. So this one for me is definitely a win. Since we're on the topic of lip products, let's talk about Cheekbone Beauty and their Sustain lipsticks. In particular, these two shades here. So on the one hand, we have the shade Nuna, which is just a very beautiful pinky beige kind of nude. And then this one here is called Haki, and it is a beautiful, vibrant pink. So there are the two of them there. These lipsticks last for hours on the lips without being uncomfortable, without being drying, without feathering all over the place. They're just so comfortable to wear. There is like a little bit of a sheen to them, yet they act much more like a matte lipstick in that they are so long wearing, but they have like that benefit of feeling more emollient on the lips than most matte lipsticks do. These ones don't tug across the lips. There's a bit of a creamy aspect to them. They're also fully vegan and cruelty free and the packaging is fully biodegradable as well. So the name Sustain is very appropriate. 
These retail, I believe, for $32 on the Cheekbone Beauty website. You can use my non-affiliated discount code CARA to save 10% if you choose to do so. They're currently in the process of reformulating their lip glosses and their lip liquid lipsticks in order to be vegan as well. And I'm really looking forward to those restocking because those liquid lipsticks in particular are one of my favorite liquid lipstick formulas. So I'm very curious to see where Cheekbone Beauty goes next and what new products are on the horizon for them. But for now, I highly recommend checking out the Sustain Bullet Lipsticks. Now, towards the beginning of the video, I talked about the eyeshadows that I'm wearing today, and you've probably seen these already by the time this video goes up. I did wear this in my review of the Say It collection from BH Cosmetics, but this palette in particular is the Let That Shit Go palette. First of all, I love the reminder in the palette name. Secondly, I love the color story. And I guess if I was to add on another one, the quality of these shadows, impeccable. So incredibly good. And the palette's only $15. So that's what makes me kind of side-eye the Natasha Denona palette even harder because that one was like $85. This one was $15. And there's a huge disconnect between how these perform and how the shadows in that particular palette perform from Natasha Denona. What? Natasha Denona. This palette is stunning. And I really don't even have any critiques that I can point out about it to make it even better. Maybe lose the white packaging, but like that is so inconsequential that it's not even really worth mentioning. The color selection in here is fantastic. You do have this idea of a monochromatic palette, but they've also included some of these other more warm neutrals that just add to the versatility of the shade selection. But really what gets me is just the quality of these shadows. These mattes are such a dream to work with. They're so pigmented and yet they blend effortlessly. You don't have to spend a lot of time to create looks with this. And the shimmers, they're freaking beautiful. They last all day on the lid, even without the use of a setting spray or like a glitter glue kind of base, they still last beautifully all day. No creasing, no smudging around, no just evaporating into the ether. They look every bit as good at the end of the day as they do at the beginning, and I just find it so insanely impressive. I love this palette so much. I have two other palettes that I'm also in love with, and they're coming from a brand that I just discovered this past month, and that is Lois Cosmetics. So first up, there was the Meet Me in the Underworld palette. I was able to get this when it launched the first time around. I do have a dedicated review on it. It's stunning. The, the artwork, the color story, just everything about this palette, I adore. I love it so much. Again, the blendability is there. The shimmers are beautiful as well. And again, the longevity of these shadows is there. And those are really the main boxes that I'm looking to check off when I'm looking at eyeshadow palettes. I don't want to spend a ton of time working with the shadows and getting frustrated with them. And also, I don't care if it's easy to apply. If they disappear over the course of the day, what's the point? So this one checks all the boxes for me. And one of the points that I made in my review video on this palette is that you can tell it was created by a makeup artist. Just the way that it's laid out in the pans, the variation in depths while still sitting in that same color family, particularly with the berries, it just speaks to somebody who knows how to pair shadows together and who knows how to build in versatility into a palette. I love this palette so much that I actually went and I purchased her other two palettes as well. Now I haven't played with the Gone Rogue palette. I will quickly show it here just so you can see what it looks like. It is far more colorful and includes this really beautiful duochromatic sort of pressed glitter over here. It's beautiful, but I haven't played with it, so I can't really speak to it in this video here. This one, however, the Rose Metal, this is straight up my alley. Like this is my kind of color story right here. These are beautiful, beautiful shadows. They show up so intensely on the eyes, yet again, they blend out really nicely. I am in love with all things Lois Cosmetics at this point, and I'm very excited to see what else she comes out with. It's just a brand new baby brand, and she's knocked it out of the park. Now I have to throw this one in here, even though I'm pretty sure, I know it was in last month's favorites and I'm pretty sure it might've even been in March's favorites, but it would be the Bite Beauty Upswing Mascara. 
This is the shit. Basically, there it is. It's my favorite mascara. I love it. I want the full size. I keep talking about the damn full size. I'm going to order the full size. It's just a matter of when. I love it so much. I can't stop wearing it. I do have another mascara in my like project pan that I'm working on and I keep ignoring it because I can't get past this one. I love it so much. Next up is an oldie but a goldie and that is the Hollywood Flawless Filter from Charlotte Tilbury. This one I have is in shade two and what I'm loving with it right now is mixing it into foundation. So I have been loving the Watertone foundation from Makeup Forever but I do try to rotate my foundations around so that I'm not just using one all the time. I do have one in my project pan as well and that's the Luminous Silk Foundation from Armani and I don't really like the way it looks on my skin just on its own. However, mix it with this guy here. That's what I'm wearing today. I love it. It just adds just enough glow that any sort of matte finish foundation that I have takes on a whole new life and it looks very much more natural on my skin and that's what I find it does with the Luminous Silk Foundation. Not that that one's particularly matte but somehow the combination of those two together just breathes new life into that foundation for me and makes me excited to wear it. I also recently mixed this in with the Juvia's Place Foundation which is a very full coverage and matte fin foundation but adding this in there just thinned it out a little bit for me, added just enough glow to make it look like a more natural finish, and again, breathe new life into a foundation that I otherwise would just overlook time and time again, but now I know how to wear it. So this one, while I don't necessarily go in and use it as a highlighter, using it mixed in with my foundations has made them that much better for me. So for that, I say cheers to the Hollywood Flawless Filter. Now we have one last makeup product before we move into the very last one that just sparks so much joy in my heart. Now the reason I say products is because it's more like a category and that would be cream blushes. I am a huge cream blush fan. I can't remember the last time I reached for a powder blush to be honest. I just keep reaching for my cream ones over and over and over. Now that's not particularly helpful for you guys. So what I did is I looked through my cream blushes and picked out the ones that I have been reaching for over and over again, and three of them sort of floated to the top for me. First up in no particular order is this one here from Hourglass. This is the Vanish Stick Blush in the shade Devoted, and it's just like the perfect everyday blush. It's a bit of a like rosy kind of tone on me, so it pulls a little bit more pink than a lot of my other blushes, and yet it shears out beautifully. It's again, one of those blushes that lasts all day on the cheeks, blends very easily, no stickiness, not even particular creaminess, to be honest. There's really very little texture. It feels more like a powder once it's applied, and yet it's just a beautiful, beautiful blush. It looks very natural on my skin. I look healthy. I look like I've just sort of been out in the cold or running around, and yet I haven't been, but it looks like it, and I just am really enjoying it. These are expensive. However, to me, it's worth it because it applies so nicely and wears so well. Another one that I've been loving is one that I have talked about a couple of times on my channel, and that is Honey Thief from Melt. So this is their new cream blush light, and there's the shade here. Honey Thief is not a new shade to melt, but this formulation for blush is. But again, you'll see it is more of like a burnt apricot, but again, it just looks really natural on the skin. You've got really good blendability with it. It has a little bit more texture to it than the Vanish Stick from Hourglass, but again, it's not slimy, it's not overly oily, it's not sticky at all. And again, once it dries down, it's locked into place and it's not going anywhere. Now the last of my current favorite cream blushes is this one here from Fenty. So this is the Cheeks Out Cream Blush in the shade Rosé Latte. It looks like it's going to be way too deep for me in the pan. And in fact, I didn't actually pick this one out for me. Sephora accidentally included it in an order months ago. I reached out to them and they told me just to keep it. So I was like, all right, I didn't know what to make of it. But once you apply it, again, it's all about the blending. 
And once it's blended out, it loses a bit of that strength, although of course you could build it up, but it just becomes, again, this very natural sun-kissed look on the cheeks. And as with the other ones, there's no stickiness, there's nothing of that sort. Frankly, if there was, I wouldn't be including it in this video because that would fall under the ew category. So then, that brings us to the last favorite for this month. And like I said, it has nothing to do with makeup. And yet, it just makes my heart smile. And it's these guys. I got me some orange Converse. Technically, the shade name is Kumquat, but I don't know what in the hell a Kumquat is or what it looks like. So we're just going to call it orange. They make me so very happy. So very happy. They're comfortable, they're bright, they're fun. They're like a classic style. I mean, these have been around forever. I've never owned Converse. I was never allowed to as a kid. Also, I wasn't allowed to own Doc Martens or wear penny loafers. Yes, I'm so old that penny loafers were a thing, but I'm reclaiming my youth, damn it. I get to make the rules now and I bought me some orange Converse and I am a better person for it. All right, and there you have it, guys. Those are this month's oohs and is. I would love to hear from you in the comments below. What is something that you have been loving this month, whether it be shoes, clothing item, books, whatever the case may be. I'd love to know what is making your heart happy and also what is not. What is something that's left you wanting more or that's left you a little bit disappointed? I always like hearing that as well. At any rate, thank you so much for taking the time to watch, and I will see you in my next video. Until then, just be a decent human being. Bye for now.